Hello everyone, my name is Christy Cosina, and uh, I will be doing Chapter 8, John Piaget's Cognitive Development Theory. Uh, I'll be working with uh, Emily, and we divided up the chapter so that I'll do the Principles of Cognitive Development, which is uh, between pages 264 and 284, and uh, she'll be doing uh, the uh, Principles of Instruction and Education Applications. In Principles of Cognitive Development, the objectives are define and describe key terms, identify and explain basic assumptions, discuss components of cognitive development, and discuss levels of complex reasoning. I also at the end have discussion questions with videos to watch. The key terms include logico-mathematical, which is the child's construction of classes and relations involving number and quantity, knowledge, uh, which refers to natural logic, that is the child's developing intelligence. Operations, uh, operations are the cognitive structures described by Piaget that govern logical reasoning in the broad sense. Conservation is the recognition of unchanging feature of a situation by the child. Reversibility is the capability of a child to simultaneously coordinate an operation and its inverse. Operational structures, which are the levels of development that require multiple reorganizations of prior thinking over months and years. Necessity uh, occurs when the child realizes that certain things he or she knows are true must also be true. Assimilation is the process by which information from the environment is integrated with a subject's cognition. Accommodation is the adjustment of internal cognitive structures from outside stimuli or the modification of internal cognitive structures that take place when the thinking is reorganized. Cognitive conflict or disequilibrium is a state of non-balance in the individual's cognitive development. Equilibrium is a temporary state of understanding. Reflective abstraction is the equilibration process that accounts for the transition between relatively impoverished to richer cognitive structures. In Let's see, em em uh, empirical abstraction is focusing on the observable characteristics of objects, and consciousness is the awareness of one's thinking. Jean Piaget focused on finding the beginning of natural logic and how it changes through growth. A basic assumption of his theory is the nature of intelligence and its development. Piaget's approach to learning more about intelligence started with four questions. The first is, what is the nature of knowledge? As a philosophical question, the answer is knowledge is knowing, or rather, it is, uh, is natural logic. It is the developing a uh, child's intelligence. Essentially, the learner's activities allow for knowledge to be gained. The second question asks, what is the relationship between the knower and reality? The learner cannot separate themselves from their ever-changing environment. Their senses constantly gather information that is used to learn more about the world they live in. The third question is, what is the nature of intelligence? Piaget's assumption was that human intelligence, intelligence functions like biological organisms in that they are both living systems that grow and develop. There is a steady, there is steady environmental contact and adaptation. The last question inquires what are appropriate methods of investigation? From a psychological standpoint, the answer is through experimentation and observation. To figure out how individuals gain knowledge, scientists must watch them interact with their surroundings. Piaget discusses four essential factors in cognitive development needed to learn. The first is access to the surrounding environment. New places with different stimuli are great sources of fresh knowledge. 
Solitary confinement is the worst place to be if individuals desire to learn. Yet, even if one can visit various environments, they would need to be capable of understanding their surroundings. This is where maturation comes into play. Children can be better children can better understand their environment if their physical bodies and nervous system have matured enough. Uh, the text gives the example of learning to use hand-eye coordination as an infant, which is necessary for them to then reach, grasp, and pull for objects. Maturation is great and all, but that doesn't help children to work with other members of society unless they also have good understanding of the social environment. Language, public education, and societal interaction skills help children confidently work with their peers. Uh, children separated from others while growing up may have a social skill deficiency and may not be able to correctly uh, correct inaccurate social or uh, cultural information. Equilibration is the fourth factor which allows children to uphold a constant condition of cerebral performance when changes of, in maturation and the environment exist. This is essentially the way the mind can keep together when faced with adversity. The psychological structure is one concept of the nature of logical thinking. Piaget termed the basic units of cognitive activity as operations, which oversee rational ways of thinking. The text says that without the system of logical thinking, children are unable to differentiate reliably between knowledge and desire, fact and fantasy, or among what is, may be, must be, or cannot be. Characteristics of psychological structures include transformation with data and objects, or data or objects. This reminds me of the first law of thermodynamics, which says, according to Eric Pianca, that matter cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transformed. So rolling a ball of clay into a cylinder would demonstrate this concept. The amount of clay doesn't change, it only, only its shape changes. This changes the characteristic of balance and compensations. When a child realizes that the nature of clay or the invariant doesn't change, they are showing the characteristic of conservation. Another characteristic of operations is the inverse operation in that objects can be transformed back into their beginning state. Reversibility is a child's ability to synchronize an operation with its inverse. If a child can demonstrate reversibility, that means they can fully understand and create a logical cognitive structure otherwise known as an operation. The text states that operational structures develop slowly over months and years and this development requires several reorganizations of prior thinking. Piaget determined that there are several states or several, several levels that children go through in thought reorganization. Level 1 thinkers cannot differentiate between reality, possibility, and necessity. In the ball of clay experiment, children tend to focus on the clay's length and none of the other proportions. Level 2 thinkers can imagine more possibilities, but they cannot coordinate their observations. They notice the clay's length and the fact that it becomes thinner, but they don't understand that the two characteristics are related. Level 3 children can identify limitless choices and eliminate wrong ones to find the answer. At this level, children can see the clay becoming longer also simultaneously Thin, and it also simultaneously thins out, but they don't understand why this happens. Children understand that the ball shape can be reinstated, known by Piaget as the empirical return. Level 4 thinkers are proactive and can make predictions about the characteristics of transformation. They are able to fully understand the changing dynamics of rolling out a ball of clay and its inverse. Level 4 children are able to construct a quantity conservation operation structure.
A second concept that shows logical thinking is the understanding of possibility and necessity, uh, which shows up late in the concrete operational level. Necessity, according to the text, is when the child realizes that certain things he or she knows are true also must be true. Necessary knowledge is obtained through, by deduction through causal relationships. Simply true knowledge is obtained by induction through facts. During level one, children cannot distinguish between necessity, possibility, and reality. The child thinks that there's only one solution, which is called pseudo-necessity. For example, when shown one side of a cube with the color blue, the child thinks all sides are blue. The other choices are not noticed, so that they came, the, the, the one they came up with must be true. Level 2A thinkers can generate some concrete code choices, such as hidden cube sides that are white, yellow, green, red, and purple. Uh, level 2B thinkers can think of some more abstract code choices, such as the possible sequences of the letters S for sheep, R for rabbit, and C for chicken. During level 2, children can eliminate some ch false choices, but they forget some of the, one some of the ones that they've already eliminated. During level 3, children are able to deduce countless choices while methodically removing choices from consideration until they reach the necessary choice. In the animal sequence, the children correctly and methodically solved three animal and four animal series. Uh, children also need to be able to answer if there can be a different conclusion to show that they understand the process of arriving at the conclusion, of, at that conclusion. The third concept that shows the nature of logical thinking is the logic of meaning. Extensional logic is operational thinking logic, which includes a word's meaning or when, a reference, when references are made in statements and whether such words or statements can be considered true or false. The text gives the example of showing a child a box of brown and white wooden beads. So the statement that there are more white beads than wooden beads is false because they are all wooden beads. Piaget also came up with a theory of intentional logic, or shared meaning logic. He believes that actions with shared meanings are very important for extensional logic. So the text says that knowledge always involves inference. That is, a relation between actions is a logical implication. Uh, an example is when infants begin playing with objects, they will insert it into their mouth first, denoting that they have created a scheme of using their mouth as a container. If the infant then wants to put the object into a box, uh, they will already have an idea of how that will happen because of the shared meaning. Object meanings involve how an object can be used and its description. For instance, infants create object meanings out of such actions as pulling, opening, closing, and pushing. Once a child is capable of predicting action relationships, they will know how to use logic. This is called implications between actions or meaning implication. An infant can construct action implications by inserting objects and then pull, pulling them back out by emptying. They understand that one action can possibly be reversed. Piaget discusses fundamental processes that help describe the relationship between the environment and intelligence. Intelligence reacts, adapts, and tries to maintain a steady state in a volatile environment. Such processes mentioned are assimilation, accommodation, and equilibration. Assimilation is the integration of foreign stimuli and ideas into the mind, so nothing new is being created. Ideas are just being added to an already existing schema. Kendra Sherry provides a good example to demonstrate assimilation. She says, let's imagine that your neighbors have a daughter who you always have known to be sweet, polite, and kind. Uh, one day you glance out your window and, she, and you see the girl throwing a snowball at your car. It seems out of character and rather rude not something you would expect from this girl. How, how do you interpret this new information? If you use the process of assimilation, you might dismiss the girl's behavior, believing that maybe it's something she witnessed a classmate doing and that she does not mean to be impolite. You're not revising your opinion of the girl, you are simply adding new information to your existing knowledge. She's still a kind child, but now you know that she also has a mischievous side to her personality. Accommodation is the adjustment of pre-existing schema or the creation of a new schema to match new information. When I previously worked on Corpus Christi Needle Air Station, my supervisor at the time had a two-year-old girl. She called all bugs bees. So when I heard her screaming bees in the, next room, in the next office room one day, you can imagine my horror that there were bees in the office. Apparently she was calling ants bees, 
at some point in her development since then, my supervisor's daughter probably realized that not all bugs are bees, and she went through the accommodation process to change her schema of bees and create a new schema of ants. grows and develops, they constantly have to reorganize their thoughts because of changing and increasingly complicated environments. They are required to reevaluate their worldviews. When they become conscious of a contradiction in their knowledge, this is known as cognitive conflict or disequilibrium. The text gives the example of showing a child two rows of five pennies. The child can count both rows and determine that both are the same. Yet if he if the pennies in the first row are spread out so that it appears to be longer than the second row, the child will think that the first has more pennies than the second. When the child counts both rows again, you know, he knows they are equal. He has two conflicting views. Equilibration is the process of balancing conflicting and changing views so that a steady state can be reached. Piaget noticed three types of equi equilibrium. equilibrium sorry. Uh, the first is the spectrum of assimilation and accommodation. The second is uh, between schemes like number and length. The third is between a whole and its interacting parts. Piaget says that uh, assimilation and accommodation need to be in equilibrium so that children can adequately compare an object's properties. He noted that a lean to, a lean to one side in the spectrum is essential for development. An example of the dominance of assimilation is symbolic play. A child engages in symbolic play to act out what they are thinking. In an effort to understand reality, children pretend as a way to practice what they know. For instance, a child will use cardboard boxes to make buildings and caves. An example of the dominance of accommodation is, I intimi uh, is uh, imitation. A child imitates others to acquire proper social skills. Piaget also noticed that contradictions can allow children to logically progress. This is called disequilibria. Yet progress does not always happen. Piaget describes different reactions to conflict. Alpha reactions occur when the child ignores the conflict. Beta reactions occur when children modify how they perceive conflict to accept it. Gamma reactions occur when children construct new schemas and make predictions. When there is a higher level of reorganization of thinking, reflective abstraction occurs. Children reflect a skill from a previous stage when they reach the next stage. This helps them progress from one stage to the next. Empirical abstraction, according to the text, is the process of internally constructing the physical characteristics of objects. Children make sense of what they see and make mental images. In his research, Piaget labeled major stages of cognitive development that children progress through while growing up. These are the sensory motor, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational stages. Children progress through each by building on what they already know. The sensory motor stage occurs between birth and one year. According to Sherry, babies learn by moving and sensing their surroundings. They learn object permanence and can distinguish between people and objects. They also learn that they can create change th through their actions, which is practical consciousness. The pre-operational state stage occurs between two and seven years. Children are self-centered and don't put themselves in others' shoes well to, under to understand their perspective. They acquire some logical thinking and language skills, but they still think with perceptual cues. The concrete operational stage occurs between seven and fourteen years. Children are able to think more logically and their thinking is more organized. Their logic comes from concrete objects and their behavior includes the concept of reversibility. They can create co-choices when 
solving problems and manage to methodically exclude some false answers. The children develop conceptual consciousness. The formal operation stage occurs from age 14 and up. Children can think more abstractly and theoretically about moral, social, and political topics with various factors. They begin to use deductive reasoning and reflective consciousness or reflecting one's own thought processes. The text embellishes on concrete and formal operations because they consist of logical reasoning, but qualitative characteristics in each differ. Concrete operations is a process that involves cognitive conflict, followed by indecisiveness, and then conflict resolution. A characteristic of concrete operations includes children moving physical objects. There needs to be equilibrium between handling objects and returning them to the previous state. Children see transformations and they can make predictions about changes and the inverse. Concrete operational children perform class inclusion operations. They understand part-whole associations such as the idea of carnations and lilies being flowers. Children also understand double classification in that flowers can be red carnations, red lilies, white carnations, and white lilies. Seriation occurs when children sort objects. The text uses the example of if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C and the inverse is C equals B equals A. Children are also capable of ordering objects that are greater than and less than each other. This includes saying that A is greater than B and B is greater than C. So the inverse is C is less than B is less than A. The formal operational stage, according to Sal McLeod, occurs when the child has the ability to think abstractly, combine and classify objects and multi-factor situations with finesse and can use higher order reasoning. Children can conceptualize and hypothesize actions and solutions with mental images. They can also come up with all possible solutions. The third eye problem is an example of the formal operational stage. Uh, children were asked if they had an extra eye and could decide where to put it, where would it be and why. Concrete operational children place the eye on the middle of the forehead. Uh, formal operational children considered placing the eye on their hand and said that it could be useful for seeing around a corner. According to Sherry, uh, Piaget was criticized for some of his methods. Others criticized how he performed his research. Piaget used his own children in experiments. He also used children from smart, well-off parents. So his research consisted of a biased sample that underrepresented a general population. Piaget also assumed that children will naturally progress from one stage to the next. However, Sherry says that research disputes, disputes this idea. <coughs> Researchers also noted that children possess uh, capabilities of later stages early, in earlier stages. So Piaget's uh, stages don't accurately, accurately represent all children since he underestimated their capabilities. This is also uh, due to the fact that he used a small bias sample of children in his research. 
Despite this criticism, education has been significantly impacted by Piaget's findings. Educators now prepare instruction to fit children's developmental stage. Environments that support children are filled with social interactions and help children improve their thinking skills. Uh, this came from Piagetian concepts. And next I have some discussion questions. Uh, I've got you know, several uh, YouTube links and uh, a TED video to watch. Uh, uh, so please answer the questions. Uh, you're welcome to you know, pick one and you know, discuss it on the discussion forum. Uh, at the bottom I have an extra resource which is a quiz that uh, psychology.about.com uh, has prepared and it you know, it's a simple quiz. It just goes through some of the concepts and it, you know, also has uh, you know, like a, a history and you know, additional concepts if you want to learn more about uh, uh, cognitive uh, development theory. Here's a list of references that I used for the project. Uh, I guess uh, thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you learned something. Um, uh, I guess uh, have a good week. Uh, thank you. Bye.